Whether it be books, movies, video games, television, and even manga, chances are you probably come across these little creatures known as yokai. And considering how ubiquitous these creatures are, one might assume that it's always been this way. However, that actually hasn't always been the case. In fact, it wasn't until the 1960s did yokai start to become the icons that they are today. You see, in the 1960s, Japan experienced a sudden and massive influx of yokai-related media. You know, movies, shows, manga, and anime, and whatnot. This sudden explosion of yokai media has been dubbed the yokai boom. From a glance, this yokai boom appeared to have happened randomly. However, when looking closer at this cultural phenomenon, its origins can be traced back to one person in particular. This person being the manga artist Shigeru Mizuki. If you've never heard about Shigeru Mizuki until now, then I can't say I blame you. Only about 14 of his works have been translated into English at the time of this recording. This compared to the literal hundreds, if not thousands of comics he's made over the course of his 55 year career in the manga industry. However, in Mizuki's home country of Japan, he's one of the most famous and beloved manga artists. His most famous work, probably being the yokai manga series Gegege no Kitaro. In fact, if you were to visit Shigeru Mizuki's hometown of Sakai Minato, you could visit a museum dedicated to him and his work, and if you happen to arrive there via the Mizuki-themed train, you could uh, actually walk a 800 meter long, that's about uh, half a mile, stretch of road called Mizuki Road, which is adorned with over a hundred bronze statues of his characters. Beyond that, nearly all of his works have been adapted in some form or another in just about every medium, be it live action, video game, or of course anime. In fact, ever since the first Kitaro anime came out in the 1960s, not a single decade has passed without a anime version getting released. And speaking of which, you might have actually played one of the Kitaro video games. Once at this video game being Gege no Kitaro Yokai Dai Makyo for the NES and Famicom system. However, you might know it by another name, Ninja Kid. Mizuki's characters have also appeared in Yokai Watch series, in particularly Yokai Watch 4. And more recently, Toei Animation is releasing a few projects related to Shigeru Mizuki, one of which being yet another anime adaptation of Gege no Kitaro, and another animated film based on his manga series Akumakun. All this in celebration of what will be the anniversary of Mizuki's 100th birthday. He unfortunately passed away in 2015. However, all this to say is Shigeru Mizuki is highly recognized in Japan, yet he's not that well known in the United States like some of his contemporaries such as Osamu Tezuka, which I feel is kind of a shame considering he's left such a massive impact on Japanese Japanese culture as a whole. So today, in both honor of Shigeru Mizuki's birthday, March 8th, hopefully this will come out on his birthday at least, what better time to talk about him and his life's work than now? Shigeru Mizuki was born in 1922 with the surname Mura. Mizuki is actually his pseudonym, and he was the middle child of three brothers. The Mura family grew up in a rural village on the western coast of Japan in Totori Prefecture known as Sakai Minato. Shigeru's father was an educated man who loved the arts, including modern and classics, and he would share this love with his sons. And while Shigeru's father loved to spend time with his sons, he unfortunately had to work in Osaka. And since Osaka is three hours away by car today, the distance meant that Shigeru's father had to be away for extended periods of time. This left Shigeru's mother alone with three boys to look after. And while I'm sure Mrs. Mura deeply, deeply loved her sons, being a housewife of three rambunctious boys, is very much a tall order, enlisted the help of a local elderly woman by the name of Fusa Kageyama. Now, you might be wondering why I'm going off on a tangent, but give me a second, this is all relevant. Because you see, Fusa Kageyama had a great wealth of knowledge about the old Japan, such as herbal medicines, local customs, and of course, yokai and she would pass down her knowledge to the young Shigeru, and this would actually have a great impact on him, creating a lifelong passion that would not just define his work, but his legacy. 
And if you were paying attention, as I mentioned, Shigeru Mizuki was born in 1922. So you're probably wondering what happened during the war years. Well, in 1943, Shigeru Mizuki was drafted into the Imperial Japanese Army and was shipped off to Rabaul, which is located on the island of New Britain in Papua New Guinea. There, he was nearly obliterated, constantly beaten by his superiors, and nearly died of malaria, twice, and lost his left arm during an Allied bombing raid. And yet, Shigeru Mizuki was able to survive long enough to return home to Japan, and by the 1950s, Mizuki moved to Osaka, where he eventually landed a gig as a kamishibai artist. Just in case you don't know what kamishibai is, it is basically a type of street performance in which a storyteller uses painted panels to accompany a story. Basically, it's kind of like uh, anime, except in person and uh, at a much slower frame rate. But at any rate, it was a pretty good gig. And this is actually when Shigeru Mura would adopt the pseudonym Mizuki. Now, unfortunately, as the 50s rolled on, Kamishibai was struggling to keep pace with the rising popularity of television. Luckily, on the other hand, Mizuki's friend and fellow Kamishibai artist Koji Kata told him about a new industry that was not just booming, but in dire need of more talent. This, of course, being manga. And with that, Mizuki would leave Osaka for Tokyo, where he would finally become a manga artist. Which now finally brings us to Mizuki's work. Now, rather than going over every single manga Mizuki has ever created, I'm going to cover just a couple of his works, mainly the ones that have been officially translated into English. I've chosen to do this because A, I don't speak or read Japanese and I want to be as accurate as possible, and B, the manga that have been translated into English by John and Quarterly gives a very good sampling of Mizuki's work. I'm not sponsored by John and Quarterly, by the way, I'm just a big fan. What better place to talk about Mizuki's work than with Gegege no Kitaro? Now, before I go talking about uh, Kitaro, I feel like I should at least mention that his first big success was actually with a manga called Akuma-kun. But since there is no official translation of it in English that I'm currently aware of, I will not be discussing it. But I feel like I should at least mention it considering it had such a big impact on Mizuki's career as a manga artist. Also, also, I just want to mention that the actual history of the Kitaro manga contains more twists and turns than some soap opera, even including evil twins. I, I'm not kidding, it is wild. But because I don't want this video to be a million years long, I was going to give a brief history on the manga series and talk about the series in general. So, starting off, the character of Kitaro was introduced in the 1950s, but it wouldn't be until the early 60s did the character actually take off, and it would actually be the Kitaro manga that would actually jumpstart the yokai boom. Gegege no Kitaro follows the adventures of the titular Kitaro, who is the last descendant of a lost tribe called the Yure Zoku, or the Ghost Tribe. Kitaro lives alongside other yokai at the yokai apartments, and if you ever needed to reach Kitaro, all you need to do is send a letter through the yokai post. Can you tell that yokai play a big part in, uh, in Gegege no Kitaro? While there is the occasional multi-chapter storylines as you would expect in manga today, such as the Great Tanuki War, Gegege no Kitaro is mostly episodic, a la yokai of the week as it were and the stories mostly being about Kitaro needing to save all of humanity, or all of yokai kind, from a much more malevolent yokai, such as when an Ushioni attacks a small rural village. And if you don't know what an Ushioni is, it's one part bull, one part spider, one part oni, and all parts nightmare fuel. And while there is an occasional lesson to be learned at the end, like respecting the environment, don't plagiarize, or never taking a dump on a sacred mountain, a lot of the stories are fun what-if scenarios. Like what if Kitaro and friends had to defeat Marilyn Monroe, who also happens to be an evil vampire? Oh, and speaking of friends, while Kitaro does have a plethora of superpowers and magical items, he can't handle everything alone. Luckily, he does have friends along with him. First, there's his father, Meidama Oyaji, and if you're wondering why he's an eyeball with a tiny body, the answer is actually quite simple. 
He used to be a mummy, but since his body was dying, he transferred his soul into his eyeball so he can keep an eye on his son. Pun viciously intended. But good old Papa Eyeball isn't Kitaro's only ally. There is, of course, the faithful Itan Momen. Then there is the cute yet fearsome Neko Musume, the wise Suna Kake Baba, and of course Kitaro's worst slash best frenemy, the half-human, half-rat yokai Nezumi Otoko. However, eventually Shigeru Mizuki started to get a bit bored of drawing yokai manga every day, so he decided to take a short break to study yokai. And from this intensive study, he would create yokai encyclopedias, covering not just yokai from Japan, but also yokai from around the world. Now, to my knowledge, none of Mizuki's yokai encyclopedias have been translated into English, so this technically breaks my rule of not covering non-translated work. However, considering that these encyclopedias were so well regarded by both the general public and the scholarly world, so much so that the Japanese Society of Cultural Anthropology recognized them as being scholarly in nature and thus invited him into the organization, I feel like I should include this. And while Shigeru Mizuki is probably most well remembered for his yokai work, he did do non-yokai related things, such as non-fiction manga. This non-fiction manga includes stories about his childhood, like the manga Nononba, which actually covers the time he spent with his caretaker Fusa Kageyama, Nononba being her nickname, and Nononba means Auntie Nonnon, and before you ask, no, I don't know what Nonnon means, and no, I'm not going to look it up. So I looked it up, Apparently, Nonon refers to people that serve Buddha in the Sakai Minato area. The point being, Nononba is a heartwarming tale of Shigeru Mizuki's childhood growing up in the rural countryside. He also did manga on more serious subjects, such as Onward Towards Our Noble Deaths, which is about his experience serving in the Japanese army in World War II. But when talking about Mizuki's non-fiction manga, we have to talk about Showa, A History of Japan. In case you don't know, the Showa era lasted from 1926 to 1989. Showa, A History of Japan, gives a rather detailed account of significant events that occurred from just before the start of the Showa era up to the very end of it, and combined with that, with Shigeru's own autobiography, juxtaposing what was going on with the country overall and what was going on with his life and what compelled Mizuki to make this over 2,000 page behemoth was the whitewashing of Japanese textbooks in order to cover up or downplay the atrocities Japan committed during World War II. And honestly, I think that is just an awesome thing. I mean, uh, just imagine the Japanese government trying to hide all the atrocities that it committed from children. One of the most popular manga artists goes out and just makes a manga series detailing the events of everything that happened between 1926 up to the then present day. And if Showa, A History of Japan, could be any more perfect, everything is held together with Nezumi Otoko from Kitaro as the narrative glue. And Mizuki's work wouldn't go unrecognized during his lifetime, and would end up winning a number of awards and achievements, such as the Kodansha Juvenile Award in 1966, Best Comic Book Award in 2007, and part of my actual friends here, the Anglo-Leme International Comic Festival in France, and an Eisner Award in 2012. But perhaps one of the greatest honors Mizuki has gained during his life was in 2010, when he was recognized as a person of cultural merit by the Japanese government. Now, with all that being said, you're probably wondering, if Shigeru Mizuki is so highly regarded in Japan, then why haven't I heard about him in the US? Well, unfortunately, Shigeru's manga isn't something Something that easily sells well or fits in well with the American manga market, which is primarily focused on shonen action series like Demon Slayer or My Hero Academia or Attack on Titan. It is very 
different than what we're used to in America. So unfortunately, he doesn't get a lot of attention. And that's not to say that any of the manga artists that do get a lot of popularity in the States are anything less than stellar. I'm just saying that the US market is a market. So what sells gets more attention. But I personally feel that more people in the United States, particularly those of us who love manga, should be a bit more familiar with Shigeru Mizuki and with that, we finally reached the end of the video. And to close out, I just want to give some special thanks to translator, author, and Shigeru Mizuki expert Zach Davison, whose website hyakumonogatari.com was an invaluable resource for finding information about Shigeru Mizuki's life and work. And of course, Drawn and Quarterly, who published Mizuki's work. And if you're interested in finding more strange or obscure titles, then I highly recommend checking Drawn and Quarterly out. There will be links in the description to both Mizuki's manga and to Drawn and Quarterly. Again, I'm not sponsored in any way by either party. I'm just a big fan of their work. And finally, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see what I have coming up next, hit the subscribe and hit the bell icon. You can also follow me on Twitter at C underscore Lewandowski. And if you'd like to support me a bit more directly, you can give a small donation to me via Kofi. Also, I have a uh, Redbubble store called Yokai Emporium that features some cute little yokai designs. Thank you very much for checking out my video, and I hope you have a pleasant day. Take care.